we're going to larger systems. There are much larger systems than this, and business majors have to take finite math. Where you'll be dealing with systems that are so large you can only do them on a computer. But this is where you learn the row operations that you have to know. And if you take higher level math like engineering, you're going to have to know this later on. So here really is is a perfect example of what we're talking about. Suppose there are three missiles. NASA or or the military, I guess they're the military is the one that deals mostly with with the uh, missiles. Suppose they're testing an anti-missile system. And so if this is California, and this is Texas, no, let's make this Washington State. And this is Texas. And this is DC. Washington, DC. And so as part of this test, a missile is shot off from Washington State toward DC. and a missile is shot from Texas toward DC. And an anti-missile is shot from DC toward them. What we want to know is where do the paths intersect? Now, of course, time is important. If you want our one missile from here to shoot down both of those missiles, then they would have to also cross each other at the same time. But that would mean we'd have to have four variables, X, Y, Z, and T for time. And we'd have to have four lines. And uh, I'm not creative enough for that. We do have some problems like that. <clears throat> um, I simply chose not to do them. It's enough to do this. Anyway, notice that you have an X and a Y and a Z because you have latitude what is the latitude of these three places? What is the longitude of these three places? And if you can imagine coming out of the board at you, how high do they go? What is the altitude? when their paths cross. So you've got to know all that. This is three-dimensional reality where we live. And this is something we're going to solve with Gaussian elimination. We're going to do essentially what we did already with those two by three problems, only now we have row one, row two, and row three. And we have column one, 
column two, column three, and column four. Okay. I have heard that business majors do 26 by 27 matrices, but it's still necessary to know what the row operations are that we use. So, step one. We take this system of three equations in four columns and we turn it into a matrix. In particular, we turn it into what's called a coefficient matrix. Where row one is negative two X negative nine, y, negative one, z. I'll get to the answers, don't worry. Row two is negative four, negative six, negative two. Row three is positive three, positive nine and positive one. For now, if we didn't have answers to worry about, constants to worry about, this would be called a coefficient matrix. Our goal through row operations is to change this matrix into the following matrix. I am going to have to erase Texas. Poor Texas. We'll just erase the whole picture. How about that? Okay, now, there we go. We're going to, through row operations, turn this into what's called the identity matrix. I'll write it in a minute, which is one, zero, 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 one, zero and zero, zero, one. This is called the identity matrix. The particular system of row operations that does this is called Gauss-Jordan. Looks like Jordan. Elimination. Business majors, you will learn this like the back of your hand. 
we don't do it in this class because it just extends the suffering. It also has its good points, namely that the answers you're looking for just fall out of it automatically. You don't have to do anything extra to find them. However, we're going to use Gaussian elimination. And what that does is this. With row ops. OK. No, you don't get a zero there. So you're going to have something else there, a number. And you're going to have a number here and a number here. But that's what you get. It's a lot easier. And then you back solve. No, that's a one. I lied. I knew it looked weird. That's a one. OK, so you have ones going down the diagonal and you have a lower triangle of zeros. Now, what does that do for you? Well, what we have to do. Is add another matrix. And that's going to be the one column constant matrix. So I'm going to have to shorten that so I can do this. I know better than to try to memorize numbers. OK, so. Here's what we do. Row one. We write the coefficient matrix. Negative two, negative nine, negative one, negative four, negative six, negative two, Three, nine, one. Okay, now I can move it up. But instead of putting the final bracket over here, we put a dashed line. And we put our constants four, eight, and negative five. and then put the bracket. Notice we have now four columns. Our coefficient matrix is this part of it. But now we also have a constant matrix. And together, here's the whole story. Together, this system is called an augmented Augmented matrix. 
Okay. So this is going to be the matrix we start our work with, and then we're going to be changing it. There's a certain order that you have to use for Gaussian elimination. Always. Even if you think you can do it an easier way. It's so easy to get mixed up that you don't want to do it an easier way. You want to do it this way. And here's what you do. Your first step, once you have your augmented matrix, is you take this position and you turn it into a zero. Yes, I'm serious. So I'm gonna put a number one by it. This is your, your first step doing Gaussian elimination. Your second step is to change this position into a zero. How do you do it? Well, I'm going to show you. And the third step is to turn this position into a zero. So that what you have is this. OK, with the exception that this now has become a number, a number, and a number. And we use a method called back solving, and you'll see that too. But it's all very, very basic arithmetic and just a little bit of algebra. And anybody can learn this. Believe me, I'm telling the truth. Your biggest mistakes come from little arithmetic errors, which will drive you crazy. They drive me crazy. All right, now. These are the notes. Here's a line, separating the notes from the real work. And now here we go. Are you ready? Doesn't matter if you're ready, we're starting. Now how I'm gonna remember those. Negative two, negative nine, negative one. Ah, there is a way though. Here's what I'm going to do. Negative 2, negative 9, negative 1. OK, I am going to do this. Again, because I'm lazy. Don't tell anybody. Whoa. Okay, cool. Matrix one. Row one, row two, 
row three. Negative two, negative four, three. I have found that you're less likely to make mistakes if you go down vertically. Now notice how that minus sign over there, whoops, this minus, minus sign over here goes with the number behind it. This plus sign goes with the number behind it and so on. It's just the way that my math lab writes stuff. I don't like it, but that's the way it is. So be careful. Negative one, there's a minus one in front of C. And a plus one in front of Z. Okay, that's our matrix one. Now, once you have that written down, I have to work on using use rows one, row one, and row two. Okay? In a recipe. I have to be able to add these two positions together and get a zero. Now your job is to figure out a recipe that will do that. Well, knowing that two times two is four, all I have to do is change the one of the signs so that I can add them together and get zero. This is what I'm thinking of doing. If I add, if I take two times row one, and I add it to negative one times row two, I will get negative four, two times negative two is negative four, and negative one times negative four is positive four. And that will give me zero. There are other choices you could make, but that's the choice I'm going to make. It has to be this position that you zero out. Has to be. So here we go. Two times row one is going to give me negative four, negative 18, negative two, and positive eight. Negative one times row two is going to give me negative one times negative four is positive four. Negative one times negative six is positive six. Negative one times negative two is positive two. And negative one times positive eight is negative eight.
hmm, what's this going to do for me? Let's see. Zero. Negative 18 plus 6 is negative 12. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. And 8 minus 8 is 0. That sure is a lot of zeros. But we're going to cope. Maybe. Because these are going to change. Now, this was row two, and my goal, I want to check and make sure that's really true. Negative 18, negative two, positive eight. Yep, yep, okay, this is true. This is the old row two. This is going to be the new row two, because that's where I need this zero. And so I am now going to write matrix two. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to write matrix two. Before you hate it, give it a chance. Row one, row two, row three. All right, I can see row two right there. So I'm going to put in zero, negative 12, zero, zero. Now, the first row is negative two, negative nine, negative one, four. Negative two, negative nine. Negative one, four. And the third row, three, nine, one, negative five. Don't like those two zeros being together. Let me make sure I copied this correctly. Negative two, negative four, three. Negative nine, negative six, nine. Negative one, negative two, one. Four, eight, negative five. Yes, I did. Okay. All right, fine. All right, now, I need to make a recipe that will give me that and turn it into a zero. I'm going to have to use row one and row because there's nothing I can multiply that zero by that's going to give me a negative three. Okay, so these are the two rows I'm going to use. Now notice that I have a negative two and a positive three. Let's write it out. Row one. It's negative two, negative nine, negative one, and four. Row three is three, nine, one, and negative five. I need to come up with a recipe 
that will let me turn that into a zero. That is, I have to add this and this together and get a zero. Now, I believe that if I were to multiply row one by three and row three by two, three times negative two is negative six and two times positive three is positive six. So this combination, three times row one plus two times row three will give me negative six plus six is zero, which is what I need. And this row, this answer, is going to be my new row three. Okay. So, let's do this. Three times row one will be three times negative two is negative six. Three times negative nine is negative 27. Three times negative one is negative three. And three times four is 12. Does that look correct? I'm multiplying by positive three. That'll give me a negative six, negative 27, negative three. Positive three times positive four is positive 12. Now, two times row three, let me put it on a line. Two times row three is going to give me positive six. Two times nine is 18. Two times one is two. And two, yeah, two times negative five is negative 10. Add together. I get a zero. I get a negative nine. I get a negative one. And I get a positive two. This is going to be my new row three. Okay. Now you can do that. I know it seems weird, but there are real advanced mathematical proofs by Gauss that you can do that. Row one is negative two, negative nine, negative one, four. I go back to this matrix number two, except, let me move this down because I need to write matrix number three. All right, row one. Negative two, negative nine, negative one, four. The row two from up here, zero, negative 12, zero and zero. And row three, is the new row three, which will go in right there, which will be zero, 
negative 9, negative 1, and 2. Okay, almost done. We have one more zero to go when we're doing it the way Gauss did it. Turn that into a zero. I have to be able to add negative 12 and negative nine together and get a zero. Hmm. Okay. Now, I wonder what, well, of course I could multiply row two by negative nine and row three by positive 12, but that's, you know, it's kind of big. So let's try to find A lowest common multiple for each of these. In other words, what is the smallest number that 12 and 9 will both go into? Let's see. 12 equals 2 times 3. That's 6 times 2. So 2 times 2 times 3 is 4 times 3, which is 12. 9 equals 3 times 3. But I need to put them both over there. Okay. So this is two squared, let's just say four. Four times three, and nine is three times three, which is nine. All right, our number that we choose, now notice that three goes into three. So nine automatically includes this three. So if I take four times nine, that's 36. So 36, here's what I want. I want to get 36 minus 36. Okay, now that means, uh oh, yeah. If I want to keep that zero, I cannot use row one. All right, because there's no way to make that be a negative, a, a positive two, so I could add those two and get zero. If I want to keep this zero, I'm going to have to use row two. Okay, so I'm going to have to use row two and row three. Now, if I multiply negative 12 by negative 3, I'll get positive 36. If I multiply negative 9 times positive 4, I'll get negative 36. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply all the numbers in row 2 by negative three. And I'm going to multiply all the numbers in row three by positive four and add them together. Yes, and that will be again, a new row three. New row three has to have two, excuse me, new row threes so that I can get a zero in that position. So I'm gonna to have to substitute new row threes twice, 
one for this zero and one for that zero. Okay. Now, we're gonna have negative three times row two plus, oh, okay, I've already done that. Barbara, just do it. Negative row, negative three times row two is going to be negative three times zero is zero. Negative three times negative 12 is 36. Negative three times zero is zero and negative three times zero is zero. Four times row three is going to be four times zero is zero. Four times negative nine is negative 36. Four times negative one is negative four. And four times two is eight. Yes, it really is. Okay, so now I add these together. Zero plus zero is zero. 36 minus 36 is zero. Zero plus negative four is negative four. And zero plus eight is eight. And this is my last new row three. Uh, professor? Uh, yes. Uh, some, uh, people some people are like, are like some people are falling behind, behind I believe. Could you go over uh, the, the operation, operation in row three, three one more time? Sure, I'm sorry. No problem, no thank, problem. You. thank you. Okay, what I did is I took row two and I multiplied every number in it by negative three. Okay, so I took negative three times zero and negative three times negative two, negative three times zero, and negative three times zero. And what that gave me was zero, 36, zero, and zero. That was negative three times R2. Now I multiplied every number in row three by four. So that's four times zero, four times negative nine, four times negative one, and four times positive two. And this is all this is for all the purpose of um, uh, finding the Gaussian elimina elimination matrix, right? That's right, that's right, because 12 and 12 and 9 both go into 36. That's so what I was going to ask. Did, the reason we have the negative 3 and the 4 is because we want to come up with the least common multiple so that we can cancel the 36? Exactly, because I okay. need a 0 in that position right there. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you for telling me. I can't see the uh, the chat. That's no problem. Thank you for going over again. OK, now slowly I'm going to write matrix four. Which is our last one. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so what's the principle of this? Like, what are we going to do with this after getting the answer for that? Um, this is what we're going to do right here. And you're going to see how handy this is. So we have to get matrix four. And this is what this does for us. Okay, here's our row one, here's our row two, and here's our row three. I start with row three. I'll wait and hold it there for a minute, but this is why you're doing it. What back solving lets us do, starting with row three, we solve for Z and find out that Z is negative two. Then we move up to row two and we find out that Y equals zero. And then we move to row one, and we're about to find out what X equals.
Okay, what you'll have in my math lab to record your answers is this, with an answer box, comma, answer box, comma, answer box. I think, I think, But just like a point in two dimensional space, the blackboard, a whiteboard, point in real life three dimensional space. Length, width, depth. Or height, length, width, height. So after you get to what's usually matrix number four, but anyway, the matrix where you get your lower triangle of zeros, that's when you start your back solving. So you write your first line. Remember that all we did was leave out the variables. These are just the coefficients. So this is negative 2x minus 9y minus z equals 4. And then you've got negative 12y equals 0. And negative 4z equals 8. You start at the bottom and you solve for z. Then you move up and you solve for y. Then you move up to the top and you solve for x. And notice we had to um, put in what y equals and what z equals and work it out from there. And once you know what x, y, and z equal, you write them in what's called an ordered triple. Just like on the whiteboard dimension, which is length times width, you write it in an ordered double, ordered pair. This is called an ordered pair. This is called an ordered triple. Now let's do the next one again. I think it'll answer some of your questions, which I know you must have. Because I remember I sure did. I thought I'd die the first time I saw this but I didn't. 
met. Okay, so step one. I'm going to write a matrix, matrix one. Okay, row one, row two, row three. Eight, two, negative six. Negative one, one, one. Three, negative one. Two dot 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 dash 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 thirteen negative four negative two okay so you write down your coefficient matrix and your uh, constants, being very careful with the signs. I'm totally paranoid when I write down signs. It's so easy to forget them. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is turn this number into a zero by adding this and this together and getting zero my very first thing to do. So, if I multiply row two by negative four, I'll have negative four times two, which is negative eight. So that would be the easiest thing to do. So, Here's my recipe. To take row one. Leave it the way it is, so I could put a one in front of it or not. And add it to. Negative four. Times row two. So row one is eight, negative one, three, and 13. Now negative four times row two is negative eight, uh, negative four times two is negative eight, Negative four times one is negative four. Negative four times negative one is positive four. And negative four times negative four is positive 16. Once I get this, and once I do a quick double check, Okay, I add them together. Eight plus negative eight or eight minus eight is zero. Negative one plus negative four is negative five. Three plus four is seven. And 13 plus 16, three plus six is nine. One plus one is two. So this is going to be my new row two, which means I substitute it for row two in this matrix, and that will give me matrix number two. Okay, so row one, and row three stay the same. Okay. 
It's only row two that's going to change. All right, and that's my matrix number two. Okay. Now I need to do the same thing. I need to be able to add this position, eight, and this position, negative six together, and get a zero. So just off the top of my head, I know that eight goes into 24 and six goes into 24 evenly. I know what I already know, so I don't have to calculate it. That eight goes into 24 three times and six goes into 24 four times. So very conveniently, these eight and negative six right there have opposite signs, so I don't even have to worry about the signs. So my recipe is going to be three times row one plus four times row three. And that should make me very happy, hopefully. If not, I'll just change it. Okay, three times row one. Three times eight is 24. Three times negative one is negative three. Three times three is nine. And three times 13 is 39. Some of these things you memorize after a while because they come up over and over again. Four times row three is going to be four times negative six is negative 24. Four times one is four. Four times two is eight. Four times negative two is negative eight. Twenty four plus negative twenty four is zero. Negative three plus four is one. Nine plus eight is seventeen. And thirty nine minus eight is thirty one. If you see me make any math errors, arithmetic errors, I hate arithmetic. Do tell me right away, please. It will save us all some pain. New row three. Now row one and row two from, from up here are going to stay exactly the same. So matrix three. Row one, row two, row three. That'll be eight, negative one, three, and 13. Zero, negative five, seven, 
and 29. Uh, 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 see, see how easy it is. See how easy it is. 29. New row three. Zero. One. 17. 31. And this is matrix three, and just try to be consistent here. I've got to use row two and row three together because I have to keep the zero in front on row three. So I'm looking at row two and row three and asking myself, Self, what are we going to do here? And I bet you're getting good at this now, and you can tell that if you could turn that one into a five, which you can very easily, then you would have negative five plus five is zero, and no more problems in your whole life. Or maybe it doesn't work that way. So my recipe is going to be to add row two all by itself or put a one in front plus five times row three so that I can say five times one is five. So row two is zero negative five, seven, and 29. Row three, five times zero is zero. Oh, five times, don't forget that. Five times zero is zero, five times one is five, five times 17. <clears throat> Five times seven is 35, carry the three. Five times one is five plus three is eight. Really? All right. And five times 31 is 155. You're kidding me. Good grief. Okay. See, so you've got to keep on keeping on. Zero plus zero is zero. Negative five plus five is zero. Eighty five plus seven is ninety two. And over here, nine plus five is 14. Carry the one. One plus two is three, plus five is eight. And one. Mm. That doesn't make me really happy. Um, new row three. I'm betting 92 goes into 180. Of course it does. It goes in two times. All right, now I'm happy again. All right, so matrix number four. Row one, row two, row three. And I'm just copying over row one and row two. We have two minutes, but why don't you let me finish this? Uh, 
Uh, I almost copied over row three. No, this one. That's why it helps if I remember to make the arrow there. Okay, now, okay, now I'm going to write these with X's, Y's, and Z's again. And here's row one, row two, and row three. So now I start back solving, and then we'll be done with this. Back solve, uh, start with row three. Ninety two Z equals one eighty four divide by ninety two, divide by ninety two um, Z equals two C. 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times 9 is 18. Isn't life grand? Okay, now we are going to back solve up into row 2. We'll have negative 5y plus 7z, but we know that z is 2. Equals 29. Okay, I'm going to scroll this up so it's easier for everyone to see. Negative 5y plus 14 equals 29. Now, subtract 14 and subtract 14. Um, that zeroes out. We'll be left with negative 5y equals 9 minus 4 is 5 and 2 minus 1 is 1. So negative five times y is negative 15, and I'd rather leave the answer on this sheet. So I think we'll all agree that y equals negative three. Okay, now, row one is over here. Row one is going to be eight X minus Y plus three Z equals thirteen. Now Z is two and Y is negative three. Okay, so eight X 
minus negative 3 plus 3 times 2 equals 13. So 8x plus 3 plus 6 equals 13. And 8x plus 9 equals 13. Subtract 9 from both sides of the equation. 8x equals 4. So, 8. we have to divide both sides by 8. And 4 eighths is 1 half. Do you ever get fractions? Yeah, you bet. So, rather than go to another page, except there's no room on this page. Ah, up here. We write our ordered triple. X, oh, is one half. Positive one half. y is negative 3, z is positive 2. Let me double check that. Okay, I totally understand if all of you want to go. We've gone five minutes over. I'm going to stay here and finish the, the last two problems, which are word problems. So I'm just going to continue them. And you're free to stay or not. Yes. Can you let me see back down at the bottom where you were finishing solving for row one? Yes, there you go. Thank you. Thank you for saying something. Thank you. I didn't understand how you got the fraction, but I do now. Oh, good. Good. I'm glad. Please feel free to contact me over the weekend. You know my email, and now you've got incentive to use Ask My Instructor. And I have notes here about uh, doing equations of lines again. So I'll make a video and new notes on that for you. Thank you. Thank you for doing another example. I'm glad to. The whole idea is for you, you guys, all of you to understand. That's the whole point. OK, I move along. You've got the Burks. See, I'm going to have to make them smaller. There. The Burks pay their babysitter $5 per hour before 11 p.m. and $7.50 after 11 p.m. One evening they went out for five hours and paid the sitter $32.50. What time did they come home? Oh, my. OK. The Burks pay their babysitter $5 per hour before 11 p.m. and $7.50 per hour after 11 p.m. So 
we have time split up into two parts. Part one. Is time before eleven PM and part two is time after eleven PM. OK, well, now that I know my parts, I know what X and Y can equal. I can let X equal the time before 11 and Y equal the time after 11. So this is X is going to be hours. Before. 11 PM. And Y is going to be hours after 11 p.m. And we're told they went out for five hours. So X plus Y is going to equal five. Now, the hours before, okay, the babysitter gets paid $5 for each hour before 11 p.m. So that's all the money she's going to get before 11 p.m. But she charges more, perhaps, $7.50 for each hour after 11 p.m. Now this is the total money for their five hours. And we're told that that adds up to 32.50 and I hope they tipped her. I hope she was a good babysitter. Okay. So these are my systems. Let me, uh, move this around up here. Just to kind of keep it in direct order. OK, so it's all straight. <clears throat> OK. I believe that since five is a whole number, it would be easier to eliminate the X's first. That's what I believe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the first line, each part by five. Ah, uh, negative five. So that I'll have negative five plus five is zero. So negative five. That'll give me negative five X minus five Y equals negative five times five is negative 25. Meanwhile, line two is five X plus 750y equals 3250. Now negative 5x plus 5x is 0. Um, 750 minus 5. 5 is a whole number. So that's going to be 2. 
we can just leave it at two. 50. Don't leave anything. There you go. 250Y or two and a half Y equals, all right, 3250 minus 25. It's going to be 50. Uh, 12 minus 5 is 7, or to 1 from there, so that made that a 2. 2 minus 2 is 0, so we're going to have 750 over here. I hear somebody. Did I miss add? I keep wanting that to be a round number. I was just oh. thinking it would be really nice if they had gone out for five hours and then like the one seven fifty hour, but because they only went out for five hours, that's not going to work. No, but it would have been nice. You're right. You would have been really nice. Right. I am going to double check my figures. No, just let's see what the answer is. Seven fifty divided by two fifty. What do you know? Three. Now three is the hours after 11. Notice that what they're asking isn't how many hours before and how many hours after. They want to know what time did they come home? Well, if they stayed out till three hours after 11, then 11 to 12, 12 to 1, 1 to 2, they came home at 2 a.m. Or 1400. No, it would be two, 200. OK. So I'm really confused, like I had it all figured out, you know, with the the Y equals three thing after 11. But then when we went to turn it into time somewhere or another, like my brain exploded and now I have no idea where we are. All right. If we have an old fashioned clock that has numbers on it, you know, it's a circular clock. Yeah. Here's midnight, or 12, right. rather. There's 12. Okay, now 11 is over here. Mm -hmm. And 1 is over here. And 2 is over there. And 3, well, all right, so I should put it up there. Well, that's cute. Time changes at 12, okay? So if you've got 11 p.m., let's just do it this way, 11, 12. Oh, OK, we figured that out by how much she got paid. Never mind, I, I just was able to pull the two points together. Like we went from rate of pay to time. I was like, OK, but I get it. OK, OK, good. I need to work on drawing my old fashioned clocks. OK, I don't know if anyone else is here, but does anyone else have questions?
I will assume not. It did that really answer all your questions? You understand now? Yeah, I just had a hard time making the connection between we were trying to figure out how many hours that she got paid seven fifty for, and then that telling us what time they came home. But I get it now. I mean, it would be like if I had an employee that I thought, you know, was um, not coming to work on time. I could look at their paycheck and then go backwards and figure out if they worked the number of hours they were supposed to. Good for you. Whoa, that's sneaky. <laughs> I meant that as a compliment. You keep your workers Thank on you. on their on their toes. <laughs> OK, Mike works a total of 57 hours per week at two jobs. He makes eight dollars per hour at job A and nine dollars per hour at job B. That's going to have to change. Biden said he was going to raise the but, but that's the federal the federal minimum wage. If his total pay for one week is $474 before taxes, then how many hours does he work at each job? OK, well, we can let X be. Well, maybe we can let X be the hours at job A and Y be the hours at job B. And we're told he works 57 hours. Betty's really tired. I remember when I was having to have two or three jobs when I was a part time worker. I hated it. Oh, I love being full time. X plus Y equals 57. Now he makes $8 per hour working at job A and $9 per hour working at job B and he brought home $474. So now we have to solve for X and Y. Um, we're going to have to find the answer to both, so I vote for eliminating the smallest number. You don't have to choose what I choose. Negative eight times row one will be negative eight X minus eight Y equals calculator. Eight times 57. <laughs> yeah. Negative eight times fifty seven. Negative four fifty six. OK, so eight X plus nine Y equals four seventy four. So this zeroes out. This gives us one Y. And this gives us. Negative 456 plus 474. Plus. 474. Enter. 18. So this gentleman works 18 hours at job B. And now I can go back up here. X plus Y equals 57 and Y is 18.
and subtract 18 and subtract 18. Clear. 57 minus 18 is 39. So X equals 39. So job A is certainly using and abusing him. one hour below 40 hours. But yeah, all right, 39 and 18. Now, does that add up to 57? Well, of course. Right, it does. If we want to check our answer, we could say, okay, if he makes $8 per hour at job A, let's do it just for the heck of it is eight times 39 plus nine times 18, will that give us 474? I don't know. Eight parentheses 39 plus nine parentheses 18. Whew, yeah. Okay, that does equal 474. Okay, how is this? I think it was kind of easier. Yeah, it was, you're right. Yeah, the time problem was just kind of abstract, wasn't it? Yeah. I think my brain had to make a whole new synaptic connection just to connect those two <laughs> things. <laughs> uh.